So in this video, we're going to be looking at adding some more drawing capabilities for, in this case, distributed loads. We've got our base load class established. We've draw, determined how to draw our concentrated load with just a simple arrow and had some helper functions that we defined it. But distributed loads are a little bit more involved. And so we've got to kind of take a look and decide how do we want to tackle that. So that's what we're going to look at now. So let's get our beam here some of the options that we have and again we're just kind of working a simply supported example here it looks something kind of like this and a distributed load as we talked about last time we could have either the you know uniform load or i could have some variation of this or we could get into we even started talking about more generic you know load cases that do all sorts of crazy stuff and i think for now we're not going to do this one, okay, just because what's involved with getting that set up. But these two, the first two, are probably worth trying to establish on those. So let me undo, get all that stuff off of there. There we go. Okay, and so we want to be able to handle you know, this guy, the uniform load, and we want to be able to handle this guy, our linearly varying load. Now, the variables that can happen on those or you could have a load that now we have two points on each of these that we have to be aware of. Where does it start? Where does it end? You know, so I could end up with a load that goes the full length. Looks something kind of like that. Okay. Or I could end up with, you know, maybe it starts somewhere in the middle and in short. So it's a partial distributed load. Or some variation of, you know, maybe this one starts at the, the, the left end starts at the start end, but doesn't end at the end. It's, we have to come up with, you know, being able to figure out these points. Now, when we created our baseload class, we said we called this as D1. And we called this as D2. Okay, and so what we will do is we will end up coming up with a distributed load class that will work off of those points. And we'll, we'll establish that so that we have the ability to be able to figure it out. Now, the other problem that happens is, is that we were always looking at a start and an end node because the loads are assigned to beam members. So the beam members are, it only knows this node and it only knows that one. So, you know, or in the case of our lower drawing, it knows that guy and it knows this guy. So we could end up adding a bunch of intermediate nodes in here, or we have to come up with a way to be able to handle that. Now, one of the questions becomes, you know, is this the start or is this the end? You know, if, you know, for now, as we're setting this up, I'm drawing everything off of the left. But if, when this goes to become a user and type of click and drag kind of situation, well, maybe he, he might end up deciding that instead of just because of the way they selected it, that they do start here and in here so we've got to do some figuring that you know since d1 is measured from the start how do we handle this negative thing so what i think we'll do is we'll behind the scenes have to force it that even if the user does it in reverse order we're going to always set it so that the start is to the left now when we start getting into frames and more advanced structures that becomes a bit of an issue with trying to figure out you know, kind of getting the ordering set. But for now, we're going to stick only to horizontal beams just to, to get this up and running and get it working. And so that's our goal is to be able to establish our load here. Okay, now, the other thing that we have to come up with now is, okay, so we know that we want to be able to draw, you know, an arrow representation of something that looks like this. Now the arrows could be up, the arrows could be down, so forth and so on. So we've got to kind of work on that. Now, in the case of the uniform load, you know, if I kind of lay this in, it's not a problem because, you know, if my arrows are up, they're all the same length. But if we get into now looking at, oh, didn't, didn't do the whole line, just does the dots. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, that now, how do we handle, you know, arrows of varying length? Now, you remember we wrote a helper function that you know now we've got to have a parameter that tells us you know what that length of that arrow to draw it is okay and so there's some challenges that we'll have to kind of take a look at as, that as well um we may end up coming up with some sort of overall scale factor making this guy a ratio of this well what happens when you know 
you know, what happens when this guy is almost zero and I try to do a scale factor off of this guy. Well, now you could get a very large exaggeration and I'm sure that will probably cross our paths because there are a lot of edge cases. The other question becomes how many arrows do we want? You know, do we want just three? Maybe do one at the beginning, one at the end, one at the middle of the region. Because I will know this point and I will know this point on the beam where it's applied. So I could find the middle of those pretty easily. Or do we want to make it so that they're always equally spaced? There's a lot of challenges that come in into this. And I think this is going to evolve over time. For now, I think we're just going to do three, just get the representation on the board. And then, of course, we've got to be able to add the solid line here. And so that will kind of give us a, a, a representation of a distributed load and we'll work on that. So I think with that, we've kind of got a, got a sense of what it is that we're trying to do and some of the variables and some of the questions that we're going to look at. So let's go ahead and we'll jump into the live code and we will get going. All right. So just to kind of catch us up to where we were the last time we were working on, we'll go ahead and run this again. We were working on being able to draw our basic shape and get some arrows on there. And this kind of, we're kind of playing around with some of the graphics. We have some extra line stuff here that's not real important. Now, one thing that we want to be able to do eventually is we're going to start drawing our graph off of um, getting things to line up, you know. So we'll be looking for critical points probably in the next video and locating. There's a list of definitions of those that we'll kind of, kind of define that we use to draw free body diagrams. And we'll use that to help us draw our shear moment diagrams. But for now, we want to look at being able to get our loads into uh, being able to draw our load on there. Now, again, we've got some, you know, some numbering that we put over the top and that's kind of conflict. You can see there's kind of an arrow hiding here under, under that one. And obviously our, our regular node shape is a little large. So I think first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll reduce the default size of the node shape. Um, let's see if I can find where I put it. Uh, the M node that's in the draw function. Uh, roller the unknown is the draw circle and it's the default that we're wanting so we'll go over to drawing helpers and then our draw circle and I think what we'll do is put a, a public constant um, public constant int default node radius and we'll define it that way if that will let us do that and I put that in the wrong spot didn't I right. let's put that down inside the class there we go okay that will get us that and then we can grab this and so for now so if I put that as 30, we're going to change this number to this guy, change this number to this guy, and I think that's all of them. And so there'll be some defaults that we'll set up, and this will allow us to kind of dynamically change these things. Now, again, we can always override it because in this, it's saying, that, hey, if I don't get it, use the default size. So let's change this to like something a little more a little less obnoxious let's try 10 and we'll draw that okay so now our nodes are a little less glaring might want it a little bit bigger let's put it at 15. and again we can always override ride those shapes if we need to okay so that gets us to that one this is a little cosmetic thing nothing there okay all right now let's go in so that gets our node shapes we want to go into our base load that's over here. Okay, and so what we've done in our base load setup is I've got the base load class in here, and then down here, we started creating a point load class that inherited from it. And we're gonna do kind of the same thing on, on this. So we're gonna copy this guy down, and I probably really should put these into into their own classes, but for now we'll, we'll leave them in here and I'm going to call this as uh, distributed. I'm going to change the name of this to force. Okay, and then this is the constructor. And we'll make that distributed force. And so that will get us 
our case here. Um, I am going to do one other thing. I'm going to change the name of this so that instead of being point load, because a load technically includes forces and moments, I'm going to call this as a point force. And I'm just going to rename that throughout. There are four locations. We have that one. That will get us here. Okay, and so we'll just start kind of building our way up to what we're wanting to work on this. Okay, so let's go over to on user create, which is where we actually kind of created stuff for our test case. Here's where we were adding our load. Okay, so let's see if this is working. And you can see what we've done is we've defined a base load of load one that we're calling as load one. So this one I'll call load two. Again, these are just kind of test test brackets. And then this is where I create the specific type of base load. So I created a point force here. Now I want a distributed force distributed force there. Okay, and then we've got our dimensions. And one other thing we're going to have to look at is remember, if we look at um, let's see how do I do this? UVM. Is to get the signature up here is that that first number is a D1 dimension, our second one is a D2 dimension, and then we have W1 and W2 where the intensity is. And this was that un this was the discussion we had back in our base loads of writing a point load to be the same as a distributed load in terms of the character so that I can handle them the same way. But the problem that we need to look at is we need to be able to figure out, okay, we need some error checking in this because right now this is saying that there's a different D1 and D2 when that should be the same for this. So we'll get that in as well. We'll do some error, get some error checking and some code checking to make sure val values are the same, that we don't go long beyond the end of the beam, so forth and so on. Okay, so that's what we're going to kind of look at on that one. All right, so our distributed force then, let's just do an arrow, uh, put it somewhere like at 100. Okay, and we'll put this guy at 200. And then we'll just for now put 50 and 50 on that. Okay, and then what we're doing in this line is we're assigning it to a beam. Okay, so, so we have our beams, which is an eye drawing object, but we cast it back to the beam. And this was saying, take the second beam in, in the system and draw that. And then, so this one, I'm just going to put it on the first. Okay, and we're going to start that. And this should put an arrow. And it, why didn't it? Ah, and the reason that it didn't do it is I don't have a draw function yet. So let's go back into our... Well... Let's go, where is my base load? Okay, if W1 is less than zero, we're trying to draw an arrow up. Did that go through there? Okay, and it never did. What did we do? Oh, heh, I forgot to add it to the system. There we go. Or something kind of like that. Let's see. All right, turn that on so you guys can see me work and I realize I've left the image off. That's all right. Okay, try it again. I'm able to cast object of type. Load type concentrated force. What did I forget? Oh, yep. Because now this guy I need to change his enum. Distributed, whoops. Force with a single E. That gets us that. Still not doing it. And, and base log. Virtual void. All right. And so then the other piece that needs to be done, the reason that it's not drawing, is up here in on user update, we're drawing the loads, but I only had a concentrated force telling it to be drawn. So now we need to be, in fact, we're going to switch this guy, switch 
to um, switch on our item dot web type. Oops. All right. And then we'll do a case load types dot concentrated force. And then that one gets this line. And then we'll break out of that one. Right, and then our second one. Kind of, this is the routing. And I don't like this switch. I wish I could just call draw and then it would automatically be able to default down to, to the one that we, because this seems a little hackish, but for now, again, that's kind of what we're doing. Is we're kind of hacking stuff together. Uh, I'll do that. Okay, and then we can take this off of here. That gets us to there. And now we're hitting it. All right, we'll continue that. And there, now you can see the arrow. Now again, we haven't done anything different on this. And so that will get us on that. All right, so now what we want to do is, this was for if W1 is less than zero, we've got, you know, this is telling us that it's a downward arrow. Now we want to draw three arrows. We get those. All right, and so where are we going to put these? Now, right now, it's drawing the arrow at the midpoint, which even that's not technically correct. We weren't drawing it at its at its position. We were forcing it just because I wanted to get an arrow on the beam drawing a point load. Now we need to start kind of looking back at our our arrow shape. So let's before we do our um, before we fix our distributed load, let's go back and take a look here. Because that's where the problem is. In fact, let me blow this up a little bit. I just realize that's probably a little small. A little bit. And there we go. That's a little better. Okay. And so what we want to do is instead of doing drawing this thing at the midpoint, we want to draw it at the actual location. So we're going to take the start of this guy dot x plus d1, and instead of the midpoint, we're going to draw it at the start because it's d1 away from the start node. And again, this is where we're having an issue with. Is the start node to the left or to the right? Because if the start node is labeled as the right, then we should be subtracting on this. But I think we're, when we, we're gonna go back and we're gonna modify our constructor, okay? So that it will always force that node to be the one on the left and then this equation will work. Kind of one of the things I was seeing as I was playing around with setting this up. Okay, so that gets us that one. Okay, now for, so let's do that real quick. Let's run this. Oh, you're mad at me, why are you mad at me? Else, oh, whoops, grab you and grab you. There we go. There we go. And so now you can see it's moved it to its real position because we'd set that at such a small location. So let's move, move that arrow real quick. Um, mm, 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 don't need the reference line anymore. Uh, point load. So it was at a location of 10. How long was the beam? Beam's like 420. So let's move this to like 100. And just for the sake of argument, again, we're gonna fix it where it won't let us do those at, at that arrangement. Um, all right, so try that. What did that do for us? Whoa. So it dropped it down, so, all right. So that's going to be in our base load. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Don't need to be downsetting. So this coordinate should just be beam Y, not plus D1. And again, it was so small before that gets us this one. And then we'll take them. Take all those out and then we'll fix the last one as well. So that gets us to there. 
Okay, there we are. Now we're back up. Okay, now it's trying to do the midpoint on that second one. All right. Okay, so now we want to do this as a start X. Okay. Okay, this guy needs to be a start X plus a D2. All right. And then this needs to be a start. Start dot X plus then so if we want to do one halfway through 0 0.5 times d1 plus d2 we'll get us that value because that's the average of those two midpoint y and i think that will get us our distributed load and it didn't why didn't it do that Oh, I bet it's because we had a positive W value. All right, so let's copy this down here. And stop that. All right, that should draw it. There it is now. Obviously our graphic is a little, a little high. Okay, so. We should probably look at moving all that stuff down too when we go. Where do we do that at? So now it's kind of getting things positioned that we got to kind of chase around. So let me chase that around real quick and then we'll come right back. Reference line. All right, so what we'll do on this one is. We will, it's because this number is so small. So let's move this down to like 200. That'll move us kind of more toward the middle of the screen. Again, these are all just kind of playful values. Does that. And then let's move this, move it over, say 100. Oops. Let's go 520 on you and. 320 on you and 120 on you. And so that should move our beam over quite a bit so we can see stuff. There we go. There's our beam. And so now you can see we've kind of got our distributed load starting to appear on that. All right. So now let's go back. Now we need to add a line. Okay. So we need to do a drawing helpers. We want to draw a line. And we're going to go, we're going to start it from beam.start.x plus d1, All right, And then beam.start.x, uh, or whoops, start.y. And if the load is negative, it's acting down, so the tail needs to be above the beam. So we're going to subtract. For now, let's just subtract 20. And again, that's another one of those that we're going to have to come up with a default arrow size. For that, okay, and we're going to draw this line over to beam.in.x plus d2, okay, and then beam.start.y minus 20, all right, and we're going to make this as brushes black, and that will get us that one. So that should get us the line, and then if I come over and flip this, and then when the w is greater than i need to make it so that it goes down that's a positive here and so we've got some duplicating code that's kind of yeah we're gonna have to work on that but you can already see the problem that we're gonna have so whoa what is that black line our beam dot start there Oh, <laughs> uh, beam dot. That's a start there. Okay. 
and it would appear that I've reversed those. Drew the line in the wrong spot. Flip that. All right, and so there we've kind of got our distributed load happening on that. All right, so now let's play around with this a little bit and just kind of test our go to where we created that distributed load. And so now let's go change him from 50 to 150. Now again, it thinks it's uniform, so it doesn't know how to, we got to come up with a, a tactics for that. So maybe that's a down. All right. Let's see. Um, back to this. I think I got my arrows messed up. Draw arrow arrow it's less than zero it's down up oh, that should be an up up cut and paste errors for the win never do it i should know better and then this needs to be a, a start here there we go Okay, and now if it's less, yep, I switched them. Just reversed them backwards. Like I say, I'm not the quickest at this, but I'll get us through it. I promise you that. There we go. All right, there's that one, and now you can see that it starts and stops kind of in the middle. That's fine. All right. And so that will set us up to there. Okay, now we've got to go in and start to address the issue. Okay, so we can do the uniform load, no problem. Okay, but how long do we want that default arrow to be? Okay, so let's go back to our drawing helpers. Okay, and so kind of like what we did with, you know, in the beginning with that circle where we have a default node radius. What I want to do is let's make a constant here, constant int um and that should probably be a double instead of an int double default arrow length let's just make that as a 20 for now okay and then and our arrow up we'll put a double length value there and we're going to add that to all of these and we're going to make this equal to default arrow length. And so, and then we're going to pass length into all of these arrow calls. Length. Length. Oh, no. We're just drawing a circle on that one. Brush. And then I need to do, oops, forgot my comma. Get that in there. And then that in there. All right. And then that 20 becomes a length. And that's a length divided by 4.0. This is a length divided by 4.0. Again, just kind of, I want 25% is what we're looking for. Now I kind of want, it makes you wonder, should we be thinking about being able to apply some sort of overall scale factor, draw the arrow once and then scale it. But for now, we're just gonna kind of do it again. We're just kind of doing brute force just to get it up and running on that. And now I want to go in and let's do um, length divided by 4.0, length divided by 4.0, did I miss any? Oh, missed that one, length 4.0, and then length divided by 4.0 gets us that one. We'll get us that.
All right, so appears to still be drawing the same way. Now let's go change our creation. We want to add, and that's not a point load, that's a distributed load. Like this. And just for good measurement, let's add another one. Make you a load three, make you a load three. And we'll go from, say, um, 100 over to 120. We'll go, just for the sake of argument, plus 30. And we're going to put that on the first beam. And I'm going to flip the downward load arrow, just so it's on the other side from everything else. And so you see now we've added a distributed load that it's trying to draw. Wow, why did it do that? So it drew that at the right spot, but it didn't draw the legs right. Which tells me our base load line is incorrect. Arrow up, arrow up, arrow up. Draw a line. Oh, because I shouldn't have divided by four there. All right, and so there's our, we've got our different distributed loads starting to be able to be drawn based off of those points. So that will get us to that. Now we got to come in and figure out, well, how do I get these lengths to work out? And so that's going to be in, uh, and so we can, we can change the length now. Let's do, um, so we'll close the drawing helpers file. Let's go back to this one. And so what happens is, is that in each one of these, this length value that is being set to default needs to be based on where it is in the position of this. Okay, so if I said, let's do a double length equals, um, mm -mm -mm, let's do 20 just for now. And I come down and I do throw in my length value here on the end of this. And then maybe I go to the other one as being 2.0 times length. Okay, and 1.5 times length. Length. And 1.5 times length. This will at least get me a slope line. Now, again, we haven't made any decisions on. Oops, let's put the length up there. Okay. And so now you can see we've got kind of what could be the start of a distributed load, and they've all changed. But I forced it that way. So we really need to come up with what are the values of, you know, length one. Um, and then link two, link three, and instead of scaling it this way, um, since I don't have length one, there's link, oops, link one, link two, this is the better way to do it. So each one gets its own length, and then we've got to kind of reason through what we want that length to be. That's the better way to do that. And then length three. So now if I do that and I run it, now you can see we're back to the uniform, which is what it thinks it is. Okay, so we've hard coded those in. Now, for now, let's change this to. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We're drawing it, um, what would be W1 on this guy? W2 on this guy. And then I guess maybe we average this one if we're drawing an arrow in the middle, 0 0.5 times W1 plus W2. Um, 
Okay. It's still drawing the arrows. Are all my distributed loads constant? They were not constant. Oh, I guess they were constant. They're uniform. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's put you at a minus 80. Let's put you at a plus, you know, plus 100. In fact, And so now you can see that those are starting to sort of work. Is everything that my loads are? Distributed load. That should be an upward load. Hard to tell which one's which. The first one should be a downward load. Why are you not acting downward? Okay, why are you not acting downward? Arrow down, arrow down, arrow down. You guys are all arrow ups. You should be length one. You should be length three. Length one and length three. Why is it not? Let's see. Okay, so that gets us our connected line. So we're connecting, now we're just not drawing things. So I think there's something wrong in our drawing helpers. And of course I closed that file, so let's go back to drawing helpers. Where is our arrow down? Minus, minus, plus, minus. Is that the one that's getting us? So it's X. Minus, minus, plus, plus, and that's right. Why are you hanging on this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> here's the problem. So the code is right, but on those cases, remember W1 can be negative. So we need to put, we need to take an absolute value of this guy, math. Or do I let it self-correct itself just by leaving it? That seems a little dangerous. Let's force it math. Dot. And we will add the math library. Math dot. Dot absolute of W1. Control C. Get you. And then view we'll do that so we're getting into and this is one of the major problems in structural engineering and anytime you start to try to draw stuff or do things generically is the pluses and minuses that are running around that's going to be a problem that you know because that minus is dependent on this guy well, so like this term here the minus sign is dependent on this guy being a positive value in all circumstances so yeah and then that should solve the problem all right, and so that flipped that load. Okay, and then whoa, what did I do? Oh, I was experimenting and kind of hosed my up arrow. So my up arrow, then that should go back to being a positive. Positive there. And so there we go. Now we're kind of in business. Now, obviously, those arrow sizes are a little large. So we'll kind of, we'll tweak some of those a little bit, kind of working on our, our arrow dimensions. But for now, we're starting to kind of get again. Aesthetically, it's not the best looking. We do need, and, and maybe that arrow offset should be constant instead of 
based on the size of the arrow. Hmm. Uh, which that means then that in this, So let's change this arrow, arrow, shaft length. No. Yeah, let's do a shaft length. Apply you, and then let's copy you. Arrow head length. I'll make you into a five. Man, these are getting long. I'm gonna start doing that though. All right, well, let's do it. So the shaft length is you. Call that as a head length. Shaft length. Apply you. There we go. And we'll put head length on you. Head length on you. Okay, default. Du, 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 du. That get all that laid in. Fact, those shouldn't use defaults. Default will just be into our standard arrow and then we will take those out of that one. So now that becomes a required term. And then let's see, that's a shaft length. And that's a shaft length. And that should be a head length on all of you guys. And we'll take out the four because we've now you and you. And you, and you, all right, all right, so they're still huge. Half length, arrow, because <laughs> I didn't change that. better maybe the arrow should be just a touch larger maybe we'll make that like eight okay all right and with that i think we have distributed loads on here so let's run a couple test cases real quick let's add another load Make you a four, make you a four. And now we're gonna flip these just to make sure that it's still drawing things correctly. Oh, nope. 
we do need to work on some logic on the image. We'll do that in, a, in, in our next video. Or maybe I'll do that off the screen and kind of catch you guys up. You guys don't need to see me play with the arrow stuff. Let's make you an 80. Make you a 50. And let's go from 150 to 200. And maybe we'll bring you down to zero. And there you can see, now we can start building all sorts of compound loads. And with those drawn and knowing where they are on the object, now I can start to come up with some really interesting load combinations or load cases for this, just for fun. Let's do, this is, so I'm gonna make sure that, and so we're gonna go from 120 all the way over to, 200 and we'll do this at 100 oh, start. and there you can see we can do all sorts of things just off of drawing those but by knowing where these points are and where we're drawing things we're in, we're in good shape to be able to start doing moment calculations and finding support reaction actually starting to solve for stuff um Here's one problem that we're going to have to fix probably in the next video. What if I make this like 500? So now it's beyond the length of the beam. You can see that there's no logic for can the load exist beyond the length of the beam. And so that's something that's got to be checked at the time that we make the load. But I think we'll handle that kind of logic checking probably in probably the next video is probably where that one needs to show up to kind of get some you know, like you know, we also had another problem with our point load in that it was, it was not, um, you know, the D1, D2, it's always drawn off the D1 dimension, but that's a little misleading. And you know, what happens if D2 is less than D1 on the distributed loads and all those kind of things are some, some issues that we'll have to look at. But for now, I think that will, that will get us to where we wanted to be on getting distributed loads drawn. And then from this, we'll start kind of working on some logistics of, you know, where on the drawing should all this be? Should we make the, you know, we've, we've got some lines and stuff that we've drawn, but I've got most of that worked out already kind of mentally and have done some kind of sample programming to kind of get a lot of those features worked out. But we're still kind of, even still, after having done it once, I'm still looking at it and making changes as we go. And that's why we kind of struggled with what we were trying to do. But that's one of the issues that we need to look at. So, all right. So I think for now, we will go ahead and stop and we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for coming out. Okay. Um, we'll keep evolving this. We're real close to having all the tools we need for drawing stuff created. And now we'll get into actually doing some engineering and doing some calculations. Uh, like I said, probably one more video on the logic checking for loads, load creations. Probably some others on node creations and beam creations as well. Getting those nodes flipped around. That'll probably be a video. And then we'll get into actually starting to draw the graph will be another video. That one will go fairly quick. And then we'll be into doing calculations and some numerics and figuring out, well, for this arrangement, what are these reaction values going to be? And so we'll come up with some engineering and some generalized formula equations. And I think it'll be fun. So anyway, thanks for coming out. Um, if you had a good time, think about tossing us a, a thumbs up on the video. Um, as always, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll keep it going. So see you guys next time. Bye now.